Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the private access modifier and how it affects instance variables. I'm going to open up my web browser to javacjava.com, select my menu, and then Java OOP Tutorials. I'm going to scroll down here to Private Instance Variable. When the private access modifier is applied to an instance variable, the following access is granted. Full access is granted to read or change the value of the instance variable from within the same class. Things to think about. Private access instance variables are generally considered to be the norm. Private access instance variables are the key to the principle of encapsulation. For more information on private instance variables and encapsulation, be sure to watch my Introduction to Encapsulation Part 1 tutorial and my Introduction to Cap Encapsulation Part 2 tutorial. Okay, let's go ahead and come down here, highlight all this code, hit Control c to copy or right-click and copy. <coughs> and move my browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop. Uh, you can, if you don't, you can create one really easy by right-clicking, selecting new, shortcut, type in CMD, next, and finish. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is type in Java C, press enter, and that will call the Java compiler, and you should see all this stuff scroll by. If you get an error message, uh, be sure to watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, then CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory and backslash tells it to go to the root. I want to make a directory with the MD command called Java. I already have it, but if you don't, um, it'll create it for you. I'm going to change directories to the Java folder. And then um, the Java folder is basically my working directory. Um, all the packages that I create, all the classes that I create are located under here. I'm going to make a directory called one, and I'm going to change directories to the one folder there. And I'm going to notepad a file called class1.java. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and paste all this code into here. <coughs> And this is package one, of course, and I have two classes in here, tester and then class one. Inside of class one, I have this private um, instance variable number of int data type, and I've initialized it equal to zero. Ignore these two things for right now. Um, up here in tester, we've got our main method entry point. And the first thing I'm going to do is just simply uh, create um, an instance or uh, create a reference variable CO of class 1 object type and set it equal to a new reference of a new instance of class 1. Okay, and let's go ahead and do that here. <coughs> it's fairly simple. I'll clear the screen, Java C1 tester. I don't know, uh, let's see what compile of class 1. Okay, and then we want to use the Java virtual machine to invoke from the one class the tester method okay and we get nothing displayed to the console there and that's fine we were just able to create our new uh, test reference so now that we've got um, CO holding a reference to a new class one object let's try to set the the number instance variable directly now it's private and we should get some sort of error let's go ahead and save that okay we do error Number has private access in class one, so we cannot directly um, you know, assign that there. Okay. The next thing I'm going to try is let's test inheritance, right? So I'm going to uncomment that, comment this, and do this up here, right? So now tester will extend class one. So it'll basically inherit all the stuff from class one because class one is the super class, tester is the subclass. So we'll see if we can go ahead and set the um, directly set the number using inheritance, right? Let's go ahead and save that out there. And we can see here. Did I on the, I, oh yeah, okay. So yeah, worked out perfect there. This was the CO object. 
the class one object and this is the tester object. So number has private access in class one. So we get the exact same thing. Okay, so the point I was just making here is that we can't directly set it either via creating an instance or reference to it and we can't do it uh, via inheritance either. Okay, so that would normally just kind of end this tutorial. Great, you got it. But now um, I'm going to just take this opportunity to talk about encapsulation here. So that worked out great. Now let's just use encapsulation to set it there. All right, so now we use the same class one reference and we'll use that dot operator to invoke the set number uh, method down here and we'll pass it 111. Set number will then take the uh, parameter number and assign it to the instance variable number here, right? And then we'll use up here the get number method to return that back, right? So get number will just simply return the instance variable number and we'll display that string literal number equals plus the get number, uh, the reference variable dot get number function there. Okay, as long as we're at it, let's go ahead and uncomment this using uh, inheritance as well. Let's save this. Let's clear our screen, compile it. And we want to run in the one package, the dot tester method. Okay, number equals 111, number equals 444. Okay, so basically you can see how that works. I'm going to bring back up the uh, my website there and come up here to the top. So full access is granted to read or change the value of the instance variable from within the same class. And we can see that down here. We cannot access, we cannot change this instance variable number with the private access modifier up here in this class here. It can only be changed from within this class one. All right, um, back to the website here. Uh, private access instance variables are generally considered to be the norm. Private access instance variables are the key to the principle of encapsulation. All right, and so we just demonstrated, hey, we can, you know, by protecting or uh, making this private here, you know, it's it can only be seen within class one, so it can't be directly modified outside of class one, like using this or this. So we can only use the the setter and the getter methods here, right? The um, otherwise known as the mutator, right? And the uh, accessor method here. But anyway, so that's that's that. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, rid of that, and um, just leave you with some final thought, quick final thought there. You know, there really was no need to test the private modifier on a method outside of the package. Private modifier is really irrelevant when it comes to packages. It's just kind of um, you know, just once again, it's local, local inside of a class. The class, only uh, members of the class can change the, the value of a private instance variable. That, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.